Now I'm here to teach you about how raising your profile and building a powerful, meaningful personal brand can really make a difference to your business. But more than that is the ultimate hack to start being the best kept secret in your industry. Uh, I also want to share with you a few of the tips that I learned from uh, four years of being a professional mustache farmer uh, at the charity, which wasn't in the UK, it was in Europe uh, for November. Uh, I'll share a bit more about that and how I ultimately ended up being uh, on television, live in front of 1.2 million people watching, and I had a 90 second window to pitch Movember and uh, everything that led to that moment. Does that sound cool? Yeah, yeah? all right. So before we begin, uh, when I usually get really excited and talk to people about why you should totally invest in raising your profile, People tend to think, well, do I need to become some sort of social media celebrity? Do I need to become some kind of superstar that's just going to be talking about myself all the time? Um, well, the other thing that often comes up is, does that mean I now have to take photos of all my breakfasts and post them uh, on Instagram? So, but I want to tell you for a little story, just a little scenario. Imagine this for a second, okay? So you're in a meeting with someone who is really important maybe to your business, it's a great opportunity, or it's a potential partner, right? And in your mind, things are going well, and the meeting is coming to an end. In fact, fist bumps are all around as far as you're concerned. And if I ask you, how do you feel? How do you think the meeting went? Well, you pretty much feel like that, right? It's kind of like winning at life. But here's the catch. After your meeting, the person you met with goes online and starts searching your name, right? And if you're feeling a little bit nervous right now, you should be. Because this is what the most likely you're going to find. <laughs> Nothing. The desert. Nada. Right? They come and like, what's, what's going on here? I thought this person would to be all this amazing thing, but I can't find anything. But then here's the second thing that might happen, which is even worse. Super confusing. They don't understand what you're about, what you're saying, what your message is, what you even do, or who you are. But this is the real catcher. You actually come across a bit of a clown. Because the only way that you've been using social media over the years is to complain about how your chicken sandwich at Pret doesn't have enough mayo to your liking. Okay? And they just go, what is this about? So um, as a result, what you hear are pretty much crickets, and you go back to feeling sorry about yourself. And yet again, another opportunity that's gone through your fingers because you didn't let your nephew teach you how to use Facebook all those years ago. Does that sound familiar? Yeah? Pretty scary? And the reason being is that actually people find that online search is one of the most trustworthy pieces of information. Right? And you've just heard from Dan earlier on, but effectively it's because you are who Google says you are. Right? And I'd love to sit and say, you're a great human being. I love you. You're great as you are. But if you're in business, then you need people to know about you. Right? You can't be the best kept secret. If I show you these, some of you will probably know most of them. If you don't, just know that millions of other people do know who they are. And I don't know how you feel about them. Okay? Some of these might evoke something. But one thing's for sure is that they don't leave you feeling nothing, right? And that's because key people of influence have a strong profile online. Now, the first myth I want to debunk with you all is that you do not need to become a household name in order to have a powerful profile, okay? You do need a strategy. You just need to become web famous. Effectively means that if I look you up online, I can find some content, some material, that clarifies who you are, what you do. I can see exactly what you're about, what your opinion is, what you stand up for, what projects you're working on, and why I should be excited to continue doing business with you. Does that make sense? Yeah. So let's talk about profile. What is profile? Like we talk about profile, we use these words, but what does it actually mean? So let's put it in context. So DENT, right? So if I talk about DENT, talk about it as an organization, we promote DENT, we do events about DENT, that's the organization. It's the business, it's the brand, right? Then we look at KPI. Key person of influence. It's a product, right? But then when Dan starts talking about the work that he's doing or what he thought, so he starts writing his thought leadership pieces, he's raising his profile. It's as simple as that. So some of you uh, might be thinking right now, right, Mark, but I can't be raising my profile because it's going to be costing my business. Well, I just want to take you for a second. Imagine a football club. What do you think a football club would want their players to be? More valuable or less valuable? More valuable. Right? The more interviews they do, the more sponsorships they get, the more they become liked, loved, and known by their fans, the more they're going to be able to sell them up. And here's the other catch. When footballers change clubs, they don't have to start from scratch. Their value is already high. And it's the same thing for managers. Right? So this is what it looks like when you're dent online, and this is what it can look like when Dan is fabulous on Google search. Let me type in his name. The personal brand actually dated over 20 years ago. All right, in an article first in 1997 in Fast Company, 
And the idea was that, effectively, for those who can't read it, is we are CEOs of our own companies, Me Inc. To be in business today, our most important job is to be heard, a head marketeer for the brand called you. Isn't that cool? That was 20 years ago. And then Dad wrote his book, KPI, 10 years ago. So we're only starting to catch up now, which is quite exciting. Um, Jeff Bezos, I won't be taking relationship advice right now, but there's some business advice to be held. And your brand is what other people say about you when you're not in the room. Now replace the word brand with profile. Profile is what people will say and find about you when you're not in the room. Now in case you're thinking, I don't have a digital footprint, I don't care, here's a scary stat for all of your parents and anybody here. 92% of children already have a digital footprint before the age of two. That's mad, right? So the idea that I have is if you're thinking that you already have some sort of digital footprint, then you might as well get in the passenger seat out of that into the driving seats and start taking control of it. So the other thing I then get is like, but Mark, it's really noisy out there. And I get that. There's like 460 million people on LinkedIn, 340 million tweets, 55 million Facebook posts every single day, 95 million photos are shared on Instagram, 300 hours are uploaded on YouTube, 152 million blogs. 100, have I lost you yet? <laughs> it's busy, right? It gets noisy. So people go, why bother? So here at the Den Program in KPI, we talk about, are you worth your salt? Effectively, I'm going to take you really quickly through these four different cornerstones that are going to help you. So the first up is social media. So social media tends to be the one that most people know about, right? It's the traditional social media platforms. It's also your YouTube, your own personal blog. It's your own personal podcast. And um, I want to take you like, quickly through a story. About 10 years ago, I went through a bit of a difficult time. You know, um, and uh, I went through what could only be described as a quarter-life crisis. I mean, it's very millennial of me, isn't it? Um, <laughs> but if I, didn't, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I had this very lucrative career, traveling around the world, uh, living in emerging economies, and I wanted to do something different. I just closed a startup with a friend who we'd launched for two years, but we went different ways, and I didn't know what to do, but I sure as hell knew that a conventional CV just wouldn't work in a competitive job market. Now, this is back in 2011, so it might not sound very parenting now, but back then, everyone thought I was crazy. So I had this idea of doing a video CV. That was it. 99% of the people around me thought it was totally nuts, except two friends I managed to convince. Dennis Duvochel, he did my website. I called it a dream job would be nice.com. I think it's still alive. And number two, Mike Mayu, he did the film of my, uh, of my video CV. So we did it. And in the words of the YouTube, it went viral. And I had no idea, because back then I was still new to a creator of YouTube. I just put it online thinking that nothing would happen. Next thing you know, everybody's tweeting about it. People are tweeting Oprah about it. And someone runs into my office. I was working in a co-working space to shout out, I saw your video. It's awesome. And I was like, shut up. My manager's there. Um, little, little, uh, little, anybody here knows the UFC, MMA? Yeah. So uh, Royce Gracie's like one of the grandfathers of uh, UFC. And he tweeted back, awesome, which basically meant my life was, was done. But it worked. The bottom line is this one video that I posted in 2011 worked. It's had over half a million views. And that video, thanks to a tweet that I sent over to Adam Garoni, the co-founder of November and then CEO, enabled me to get a job interview in London. And I was given the job country manager of November on the spot. It was crazy. I quit my job. They didn't even have a job contract, but that's a different, different story. <laughs> So I became, a, 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 yeah, of course, a mustache farmer. And it was an incredible experience because we had very, very little budget, but we had very, very big dreams, right? To stop men dying so young. And this has really taught me that there is no such thing as a budget too small or as a dream too big if you get a bit creative around your pinch of salt. Okay, then I did the classic thing, wrote a book about it, because I thought that's what you did. You know, when you're 30, you'd say, obviously, about your life expectancies and, and all your biography. But again, I, did, I had a small budget, so I used social media as a way to reach as many people as I could. And I called it, take my book on a book tour. And so people took my book and went around the world and took photos of themselves with my book. One of my favorites is, I don't know if there's a click, I don't want to touch it just in case I break it. But there's someone there holding on the left, my book at the uh, FIFA World Cup in Brazil. <coughs> Sorry if there are any Brazilians in the room. It was a bad day for you. But it went to Cuba, it went over to Hong Kong, the Philippines. It just traveled everywhere. And I was hearing people's stories of trying to live an unconventional life, trying to do something different. And I thought, these stories must be captured somehow. And I had no idea what I was doing. This is 2015, so I launched a podcast, right? It's like the new thing today. It's like the fastest media channel, right? But back then, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So I launched a podcast, blackmailed pretty much everybody I knew, Dan's included. Um, 
a good interview. And it's taken me on an incredible journey of meeting some of the people I, I'm inspired by. Um, and today, I've had over 100 episodes, 65,000 downloads. But the more coolest fact about that is that it's listened to across 100 different countries. That's cool, right? I think that's pretty, pretty neat. Um, and back in November, when we talk about social media, we went all in on Facebook, right? One of the myths is that you need to be on every single social media platform, posting 16 different pieces of content per day all the time. Well, actually, we just went all in on one. And at one point, we had the highest Facebook like groups of any country around the world. OK, so this is the thing I want to take away from social media. You don't need to become a superstar. You don't need to pretend to be someone you're not. You don't need to act like something that you don't want to be. But you do need to look the part. As in, it does, need, it does need to look professional. You need to have a few thousand followers on your platform of choice. And the last of all, stay in your lane. It's something with Dan we talked a lot about, which is effectively, um, there's a difference between noise and signal. Okay? Noise, it's scattered, it's inconsistent, it's incoherent. A signal is consistent, it's clear, and it's directed. <coughs> Okay, and most of all, I want to share a story. This is a true story. I was looking for a new team member to join my team as a marketing ops, and uh, great profile. Looked them up. Interview went well. Went online, looked on Twitter, and effectively, it was just him complaining <laughs> about all the different products that he'd been using, all the different companies. And I just thought, that's not great. And he wasn't sticking to his lane. He wasn't talking about the power of marketing and how it could transform a business or transform your life. Does that make sense? Yeah. If you want to share your personal political opinions and you're not related to your business, then be my guest and, and create a, a private account. Um, a stands for awards and association. Effectively, it's what are the awards that you've won and who have you associated with in terms of big projects, OK? This works like a treat. In November, in the UK, we partnered with Gillette, and we beat a world Guinness record, which gave us a bunch of publicity, which was really cool. Um, really, really like fascinating thing about how the social media kind of ecosystem works. One of my friends, stick with me, because the story gets a bit layered. One of my friend's neighbor worked at Google, told her she was looking for a new mentor, someone to represent for their new Google courses around personal branding and self-promotion. My friend who saw all my content online said, I know someone. You should, you should talk to Mark. She contacted me. I met them back at Google HQ. Long story short, they invited me, and I'm part of their video series on, on how to practice self-promotion, why you need to talk about yourself in a way that feels real. That was, that was just like just like putting myself out. Thank you very much. I'll take that. Thank you. Stop it. Stop it. OK, quick story about Jane, a graduate of KPI. I met her back in 2012, actually. So Jane founded the English Cream Tea Company, which effectively, she sends hugs in a box. That's what she does. And uh, a few years back, she was invited to go and break a world Guinness record. And it gave her some fantastic opportunities to be featured in the media. It also made her to connect with the people. She's been featured on BBC News, gave a TEDx talk. And she's written a book that is going down like a treat. I did work that joke in last night. I was very proud. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, L stands for live events, OK? So live events, effectively, this, oh, by the way, you're the first group to see this photo. OK, this is a bit of nostalgia for me. But that event was when I launched November France in Paris in November 2012. That's how it started, in a, in a kind of a gritty bar somewhere in the center of Paris with a few people. We had a few partners come in there. And I just told the story of November, why we had started November, why it started, what we were trying to do, what our mission was. And that, I could have never guessed that four years later, I would walk away from November knowing that I'd helped raise 2.8 million euros for men's health that I'd inspired 110,000 people to take part. But more than that, that my team and I won the best award of all, which was the best global execution campaign across the country. Thank you. And the reason why I'm mentioning this to you is that you cannot underestimate the power of live events. OK, I know we talk about scaling our time and, and making sure that we, we don't exchange you know, time for many, 100%. But live events gives you an opportunity for people to experience you and experience your vision, your mission, and your purpose. We did all sorts of events when it came down uh, in November. I spoke at companies. Uh, I went and did bike rides with people who wanted to organize some kind of events. Uh, I ended up uh, speaking at some, uh, that was like another corporate event. And then, you can't see that, but that was one of my first events when I launched in Switzerland. I'm standing on a bar, because there's no stage. And these are all PG-13 photos I could show you, OK? But most of it, I would end up going into um, gala events, so we'd have to be dressed up. Uh, this is a stand-up comedy night that some uh, of our Mobros and communities organized. And I still, to this day, use the same techniques for my business. 
So I still run live events. I host my podcast live in front of audiences. And I do it in smaller gatherings too. Because I find that when you're in front of your people, you can get a direct feedback in terms of, is your product of value? And are people appreciating what you're doing? This is the thing I want to take away from my live events. Don't think that live events have to necessarily look like this. They can be a drink after work. They can be a breakfast. They can be also, actually I heard someone, I think, with the KPI, who decided to take an event at a Porsche um, shop because they thought it was quite cool for the customers that they wanted to bring. So it can come in all shapes and sizes. Now, I'm a bit of a selfie whore, not going to lie. I'm kind of known for that. Uh, but this is, I believe, made me the very first TEDx speaker to ever take a selfie on the TEDx stage. Uh, but the reason I'm sharing this is that this is by far the most amazing piece of content I've ever created and put out as a live event. It's my TEDx talk. It's the most viewed TEDx talk at TEDx Cardiff of all time. It's at about, um, yeah, 390,000, I think I checked this morning. But thanks to this talk, it's generated over 80% of all my business leads over the last 18 months. And it's led me to a huge opportunities getting paid to go and talk. It's getting me to work with some amazing organizations around unleashing their purpose and getting the message into a movement. And this is literally in the last nine days, I got an invitation to go and speak in Mexico in October, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, and also, this came yesterday. Um, I was invited to come on a project to becoming an interviewer for purpose of organizations like Google and the likes around London for a year. Now, none of this would have happened had I not put myself out there through live events. OK, still with me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. T for traditional uh, media. So this is basically what it says on the tin. Newspapers, uh, online websites, magazines, and I would also go as far as saying established YouTube channels, big podcast names, and Netflix. I think Netflix could, should be included in there. Um, we had very little budget, so we had to get people to talk about us in a big way when it came down to November. So I always used to organize unconventional type of press events to get journalists excited. Now, if you want to get journalists excited, get some food, get some drinks, and, uh, and come up with some wacky concept. Uh, we put a moustache on the front of a boat uh, in Paris uh, on, on the Seine, which was quite cool. But this is my favorite events. Uh, we managed to get a barber who wanted to get involved, all this for free. Uh, we got a barber chair on the back of a pickup truck. The camera crews got excited. Here's why. We had zero authorization to do this. So I don't know if I can get arrested for an event that happened about six years ago. But we basically ghetto blasted this pickup right in front of the Eiffel Tower. I jumped on, and the barber shaved me down. We took some photos, and that got then in Metro, which is the equivalent of, uh, sorry, 20 minutes, which is the equivalent of Metro. And it became a super popular piece of content. So sometimes, if your budget's not there, just become a bit more creative in terms of how you actually show up. And this led me to my first TV uh, presentation, where it was a little awkward. I felt a little bit weird um, in that setting. Uh, <laughs> it was for some Belgian chat show. I kid you not. I got there, and I just thought, this is so surreal. But then, as I told you at the beginning, all this journey, four years later, after having pitched a million times, remember, through little grassroots activities to big corporates, I ended up on Verminute, which is the equivalent of the, I think it's the Tonight Show, the Daily Show with Trevor Noah uh, in France. And, uh, and it was an amazing experience, actually. For about 90 seconds, you just have this camera, and you go, and you know that 1.2 million people watch it. And, it. and it was just a phenomenal experience. And I still use today traditional media to get the word out, to raise my profile, to get booked up for workshops and gigs. And I want to finish with this. I want to tell you about Once Upon a Time. Okay, Once Upon a Time, if you're an artist, or if you're a musician, you had to pray that you could end up on MTV to be known. Today, thanks to platforms like YouTube or Vimeo, you can get discovered. Now, that's how Justin Bieber got discovered, in case none of you knew. right? This is young Justin Bieber there. Isn't he cute? Sweet, isn't he? For the tattoos and, and naked photos. But it's, it's how that's how he got started. Once upon a time, if you were in the fitness industry and you wanted to get a cassette, a VHS deal, you had to make sure you know the right people. Right? You get a bit of a royalty if you were lucky. Today with Instagram, you can reach thousands if not millions of people with a push of a button when you can share your strategy or methods. Once upon a time, if you wanted to go and give a talk at a prestigious event, you had to wait to be invited. Or you had to pay 10 grand to go and attend something. Today there are events like TEDx, which are local organized TED events, which enable you to have a platform to speak to the world if you have an important idea to spread and share. Once upon a time, if you wanted to run your own live event, you had to book an event agency. You had to pay 
thousands of pounds in ads. You had to get a classified ad in a newspaper. Today, thanks to websites like Eventbrite, you can actually launch your own events. And on Meetup, same thing, right? You can organize your own events almost for free. Once upon a time, you get, you're getting the gist around here? Yeah, cool. Once upon a time, if you wanted to be on national radio, right, you had to be a journalist or a politician or an author or a celebrity. Today, thanks to the power of podcasting, you can be an inside people's ears and speak to their hearts with the power of sitting in your bedroom. I mean, that's how far the technology has gone. Once upon a time, if you wanted to be featured in the newspapers and had your business being talked about, then you had to get a classified ad out and you had no idea if anybody even was going to see it or read it. Today, thanks to platforms like Facebook, you can target the perfect customer, making sure that the money that you're spending goes to the right people who need to hear your message. And last but not least, once upon a time, if you want to be a columnist, if you want to write a regular article in a newspaper or a journal, you have to have the right contacts. Today, thanks to platforms like Medium or MailChimp, you can write every single week to a dedicated audience what you're about, what you're trying to change in the world, what kind of dent you want to make. It's never been a more exciting time to raise your profile. It really, really is. And I think one of the biggest lessons that I wish I could share with everyone here is that you need to stop making it into this big complicated thing, that you need to sound like someone you're not, because there's the saying that we say that your vibe attracts your tribe. Okay, so stick to that, remember that, because when you speak from your truth, when you speak about what matters to you, raise your profile, follow the salt method, you'll go to great places. I wanted to share with you two of these uh, recent kind of um, social media messages I received from uh, following my last KPI profile day. And this is Andrew, and I don't know if you can read it, it says profile, profile, profile. It makes everything so much easier. He did one personal event, he got two speaking opportunities, writing on social under his name. It was totally unexpected. And then Mark sent me this LinkedIn message. I asked him if I could share it. He said it was cool. And basically, he wrote this one article on LinkedIn, and it got picked up by an editor, and now he's scheduled to have an article written in an industry. That's pretty cool, right? I do not want you to live with the pain of knowing what it's like to seeing your people being served by people who you know, frankly, you could be doing better than because you could serve them better. And that pain of knowing that you're the best kept secret is one of the worst feelings as an entrepreneur because you know you can make a difference. And all it will take is for you to stand up, have the courage to speak about what you want, what you're making, what you're about, and the world will reward you, I guarantee and I promise you. That's it. I think I'm on time. Thank you very much.